My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. So today I wanted to talk to you about the beta blocker withdrawal syndrome. Okay. And now a lot of people have contacted me and said, look, how do I safely come off beta blockers? And therefore I thought I would quickly do a video around the subject. Uh, before, I, uh, before I start, it's important to say that please do not try and alter your medications, your dosages, without speaking to your healthcare provider, as he or she will know more about your unique situation uh, than me. And all I'm really trying to do in this video is just giving general information, because it's a subject that not a lot of people know too much about. So always speak to your doctor, uh, armed with the information I'm providing, uh, and see what they say, and see whether it's even safe for you to come off your beta blockers or reduce the dose. Now, beta blockers are one of the commonest classes of medications that we use in cardiology, and often serve as a bit of a jack of all trades. They basically blunt sympathetic activity, the effects of adrenaline in our system, and by doing so, they have a multitude of potentially beneficial effects, such as reducing heart rate, reducing blood pressure, making the heart less irritable, reducing the demand on the heart uh, and increasing the time for the heart to fill with blood uh, so that the heart is able to then contract more effectively and push more blood out. In some situations, they make people feel better, i.e. they improve the quality of life. In other situations, they may actually have a prognosis-modifying role, which means that they can actually prolong life. Let me give you some examples of this. Okay, Beta blockers can be used to control blood pressure. Here, they don't necessarily make people feel better, but they may have a prognosis-modifying role, meaning that if they lower the blood pressure, they reduce the risk of bad things happening to you in the future. The prognosis-modifying role is a very weak role, uh, but that's why they're used with blood pressure. Sometimes, they, often, they're used as a treatment for heart failure. In fact, in heart failure, they are very effective, and they make people feel better, but can also have a very significant impact on improving lifespan or prognosis. They can be used in heart rhythm disturbances, ectopics, atrial fibrillation, VT, uh, SVT. And here they make patients feel better, they suppress the arrhythmia, but they can also have a prognosis-modifying role, i.e. even if they don't make you feel better, they may prevent bad things from happening to you in the future. They can be used to treat angina, and they can also be used in a prognosis-modifying role after a heart attack. So again, here they may improve both quality and quantity of life. And sometimes they can be used purely for symptom control, such as as an anti-anxiolytic or to suppress benign ectopic beats in patients with normal hearts. So if you're taking a beta blocker, it's always worth asking why you take them. Is it because they make you feel better, or is it because they are in some way being used for a prognosis-modifying role or effect? Uh, and that's really important, because if it's just about making you feel better, then maybe reducing them may not necessarily be harmful as such. Yes, you may not feel as good, but you can then decide that and go up back up to the dose you were taking. If they're being used in a prognosis-modifying role, then you're not going to realize those benefits uh, yourself, uh, but they may prevent bad things happening to you in the future. Uh, and therefore, in that setting, you may say, well, okay, I don't necessarily want to come off a medication which has been proven to, say, prolong life or stop bad things happening to me in the future. Now, acute abrupt withdrawal of beta blockers has been shown in many case reports to be associated with an increased risk of morbidity and mortality. This has mainly been described in patients who take beta blockers for angina due to significant coronary disease. And in a few of these patients, when they've stopped the beta blocker, suddenly uh, patients have had more angina and even had heart attacks. Similarly, there have been case reports of patients who take beta blockers to control dangerous heart rhythm disturbances, and the beta blocker was abruptly stopped. It led to precipitation of ventricular dysrhythmias and even, in some cases, death. There have also been reports of heart failure status worsening and blood pressure going up excessively high when people have stopped the beta blocker uh, abruptly. And that is why, you know, everywhere you look, people say, do not stop the beta blocker abruptly. This phenomena is termed as an acute, as acute beta blocker withdrawal syndrome, where something bad happens when you suddenly stop the beta blocker. Why does it happen? Why does this happen? It is believe that the withdrawal effects happen because of increased sympathetic activity. This is 
probably due to something called beta receptor upregulation, which occurs during the period of beta blockade. Now, what this means is that when you have receptors, the beta receptors, and you're blocking them, um, with a beta blocker, in some way you're sensitizing those receptors. Those receptors become more sensitized to the effects of adrenaline. They're, they're, they're being blocked, so they're not acting, they're, you know, the adrenaline isn't getting to them, but they become more sensitized. This is called upregulation. It's a well-recognized phenomena where the receptors that are being blocked become more sensitive and responsive to circulating adrenaline. It is believed that receptors take 24 to 36 hours to downregulate when the beta blockade is removed, right? So when you take away the block, the, the, the blocking agent, the beta blocker, these are more sensitized receptors, but the receptors will then downregulate by themselves in 24 to 36 hours. So the problem is if you stop the beta blocker abruptly and there is no beta blocker left in your blood for a particularly long time, then there is a period where you have more sensitized receptors which are not being blocked, which are going to be um, more responsive to the effects of adrenaline. And this is where you may get this sudden kind of... Uh, upsurge or um, overreaction to adrenaline. Beta blocker withdrawal syndrome is far more likely to happen with short-acting beta blockers, okay? Those are beta blockers where you have to take two or three doses in a day because they have a much shorter half-life. If you have one of these medications which has a short half-life, you take it away, it doesn't stay in your body very long. So there's a much longer period of time when the beta blocker, when the beta receptors are upregulated and are taking time to downregulate. So you go a longer period of time with more hypersensitive beta receptors. If you have take a beta blocker with a long half-life, then even after discontinuing the beta blocker, the beta blocker will stay in your body for much longer and therefore there will still be some beta, recept beta blocking action and this will give your body enough time for those beta receptors to downregulate. So, Beta blocker withdrawal syndrome is more of a worry with short-acting beta blockers such as propranolol, metoprolol, carvedilol. It is best to be cautious about reducing the dose in, carefully in such patients before stopping. So in such cases, most people would say that you should take perhaps the usual dose but once daily for a week and then every other day for a week and then eventually stop. If on the other hand you're taking a long-acting beta blocker, then take half the usual dose for a week, then half the usual dose every other day for a week, and then stop. As I say, it's very important that you only alter the dosages if sanctioned and supervised by your own doctor. But I hope this information is useful to those people as to what this effect is with the beta blockers and coming off them.